Hello everyone. This is our fourth and last lecture for Chapter 4, An Introduction to Probability. In this lecture video, we will discuss how to calculate probabilities for independent events, mutually exclusive events, and not mutually exclusive events. We will begin with the multiplication rule for independent events. Remember that independent events are when one event has no effect on subsequent events. Suppose that you flip a coin twice. What is the probability that your coin lands on heads on both flips? So put another way, what is the probability that your coin lands on head on the first flip and your coin lands on head on the second flip? We can create a sample space that lists the outcome of this experiment very easily. So let's look at that. In flipping a coin twice where H represents the outcome heads and T represents the outcome tails, we can obtain a sample space, which is this first line right up here, S equal to HH, HT, TH, and TT. There is one outcome, one out of four possible outcomes for heads with both flips. Because each outcome is equally likely, we have, we're looking for the probability of heads on the first flip and second flip. So we're going to take this apart for a second. Probability of heads on the first flip, we're going to call that probability of event A. Probability of heads on the second flip, we're going to call that probability of event B. Remember, these are independent events. Okay? The multiplication rule for independent events is probability of event A and event B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So the probability of A, I've highlighted it in green, prob probability of A is heads on the first flip. So I highlighted that with the first two. Okay, So it's 2 out of 4, which is equal to 1 half, which is equal to 0.5. Now the probability of B The probability of B is heads on the second flip, right? So that's one and, whoops, hold on. And two. So two out of four again, right? So notice heads in the second flip. So it's two out of four, which is one half, which is 0.5. Now we take these two probabilities and we multiply them because they're independent events and we use the multiplication rule. So 1 half times 1 half or 0.5 times 0.5 is equal to 0.25. Now the interpretation for this is that there is a 25% probability that our coin will land on heads for both both coin flips. This does not mean that 25% of our two coin flips must land on heads. What this means is that we expect 25 out of 100 times or a 25% probability for our two coin flips to land on heads. Remember probabilities are always expectations. Now let's explore the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. Remember that mutually exclusive events are when two events cannot happen at the same time. If A and B are mutually exclusive events, then the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. However, Remember that with mutually exclusive events, the probability of A and B is always equal to zero. So the probability of A and B is equal to zero. 
the addition rule for mutually exclusive events is simply the probability of A or B equal to probability of A plus the probability of B. In other words, the addition rule for mutually exclusive events states that if you have two events that have no common outcomes, the probability that one or the other occurs is the sum of their probabilities. The addition for mutually exclusive events can be extended to more than two mutually exclusive events. In general, if events A, B, C, and so on each have no outcomes in common, then the probability of A or B or C or so on is equal to probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C plus probability of so on and so on. So let's take a look at an example. We'll take a look at a deck of cards and the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. Suppose a single card is selected from a standard deck of 52 cards. We will use the theoretical method for calculating the probabilities because the outcomes are equally likely and easy to count. So calculate the probability of the event A drawing a king. A standard deck of cards has four kings. So the probability of drawing a king is equal to 5 out of 52 which is equal to 0 0.0769. Now, calculate the probability of the event A draw, drawing a king or event B drawing a queen. We use the addition rule because the events are mutually exclusive. You cannot simultaneously draw a king and a queen. A standard deck of cards also has four queens. So, the probability of drawing a king, we already said, was 0 0.0769. The probability of drawing a queen, again, is 4 out of 52, and still 0 0.0769. And this is assuming we're replacing, the, we're replacing the, the cards, right? So the addition rule for mutually exclusive events is that the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. So we would take the two probabilities, add them together, and that would give us 0.1538. So 0 0.0769 plus 0 0.0769 is equal to 0.1538. We would interpret this, or the interpretation is, there is approximately a 15% probability that we will draw a king or queen from a deck of 52 cards. Again, we expect that about 15 out of 100 draws, or 15% probability, to pick a king or a queen from the deck. Let's try another example. So here's a problem. The probability that someone in the human population has an AB blood type is approximately P equal to 0.04 or 4%. The probability that someone in the human population has an O blood type is approximately P equal to 0.45 or 45%. Knowing that each individual can have one and only one blood type, we're asking, A, what is the probability that a person has an A, B, and an O blood type? And B, what is the probability that a person has an A, B, or an O blood type? So let's start with A. Remember, the events having A, B, and O blood type are mutually exclusive. An individual cannot have both blood types. So the probability that a person has an A, B, and an O blood type is equal to zero. And that's always the case with mutually exclusive events. Now for B, because these are mutually exclusive events, we can use the, ad, the ad, additive rule or the addition rule to find the probability that a person has an AB or an O blood type. So we take our probability 
that someone has AB blood type, which is 0.04, plus the probability that someone has an O blood type, which is 0.45. Add them together, we get a probability of 0.49. How do we interpret this? Here we go. The interpretation is there is approximately a 49% probability that an individual has an AB or an O blood type. Again, we expect that about 49 out of 100 individuals or 49% probability that someone has an AB or an O blood type. A question you may be asking yourself is what if I need to calculate the probability of two events that are not mutually exclusive? This is a legitimate question. Remember that not mutually exclusive events will have outcomes in common between the two events. The addition rule for any two events A and B for not mutually exclusive events is the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So let's take a look at an example of cal for calculating probabilities of events that are not mutually exclusive. Suppose a single card is selected from a standard 52 card deck. We want to know the probability of drawing a king or drawing a diamond. These events are not mutually exclusive because the outcome king of diamond is in both events. So we need to use the addition rule. So first, let's calculate the probability of drawing a king. We did this earlier. We have four kings out of 52. It's four out of 52, which is equal to 0 0.0769. The probability of drawing a diamond, there are 13 diamond cards out of 52 cards. The probability would be 13 out of 52, which is equal to 0.25. Calculating the probability of king of diamond, there is one king of diamond out of 52 cards, so one, out of 50, one divided by 52 is equal to 0 0.0192. Here, what I've done is I've just turned each of these probabilities into probability of A, probability of B, and probability of A and B. So the probability of drawing a king is equal to the probability of A, which is equal to 0 0.0769. The probability of drawing a queen is equal to probability of B, equal to 13 divided by 52, which is equal to 0.25. And the probability of a king of diamond is equal to the probability of A and B, which is equal to 1 divided by 52, which is equal to 0 0.0192. The addition rule... Remember, for not mutually exclusive events is the probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So we calculate that with this right here, which, which says probability of A or B is equal to 4 divided by 52 plus 13 divided by 52 minus 1 divided by 52, which is equal to, and I like to convert to decimals because it's easier to add that way, so equal to 0 0.0769 plus 0 0.25 minus 0 0.0192, which is equal to 0 0.3077. So what does this mean? The interpretation is, there is approximately a 31% probability that we will draw a king or a diamond from a deck of 52 cards. Again, we expect that about 31 out of 100 draws, or 31% probability, to pick a king or a diamond from the deck. All right, so here's a quick summary of the rules of probability. So number one, the probability of any event must be between zero and one inclusively. Two, the sum of the probabilities for all of our outcomes must equal one. Three, if events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B 
is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. If they're not mutually exclusive events, then the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. If A represents any event, then A prime represents the complement of A. So the probability of A prime is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. If A and B are independent events, then probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So this concludes our coverage for chapter 4.